This is Homo agaster, the working man. One of the more successful species of human, they were around from 1.8 million years ago to 600,000 years ago. The most complete agaster fossil shows a skeleton more like that of a modern human than a chimp. A barrel-shaped chest over narrow hips and legs longer than their arms. They're also getting taller than other human species, likely being able to grow to around 6 feet. Being tall and slender allowed for them to cool down quickly under the African sun. With this, it's also thought that Agaster was less hairy than previous species. With a flatter, more elongated skull, intelligence and ingenuity were still developing, but not quite at our capacity yet. They were very adept at making tools, particularly the hand axe, useful for cutting meat and killing weak and exhausted prey. However, for well over a million years, there were no advances in the technology of the axe. Not a single specialised version for different types of prey, or an aerodynamic version that could have been used as a spearhead. Even so, they were successful, spreading throughout much of Africa. With this spread they found the opportunity to learn about an altogether different type of technology. Fire. It could be used as a weapon, but also to make food more edible to an altered gut, and to keep them warm at night. But just as significant, some members of the Agaster species became the first people to leave Africa. Those that reached East Asia had developed into a different species altogether. Behold, Homo erectus. They continued to use fire and their stone tools were more advanced and multi-purpose. As with previous stages of evolution, Homo erectus also had a larger brain than its ancestors. With the larger brain and having crossed into a new environment, this perhaps suggests the origin of the very first languages. Despite these advancements, it seemed that Homo erectus did not leave any descendants. The Agastas that remained in Africa and migrated to Europe became Homo heidelbergensis. Historically, there has been debate around the exact classification of Heidelbergensis, whether it be its own species or a subspecies of Homo erectus or even of Homo sapiens. It's now 400,000 years ago, and fire is no longer something that is considered incidental to the lives of our ancestors, but an integral part of daily life. With this, they were able to fully establish themselves as a presence in prehistoric Europe. Looking at the skull, the facial bones seem more vertical like us rather than sloping like further ancestors similar to chimps. The brain case again is larger with a significant increase in size over that of Egaster and Erectus. Homo heidelbergensis was incredibly widespread and the massive population was then divided into two new species. A combination of factors the gravitational pull of Jupiter, the growth of the Himalayas, the colliding of the Americas and the output of the Sun led to one of the major climate events in the Cenozoic Era, the Ice Age, properly referred to in this context as the last glacial maximum. The presence of ice sheets and permafrost in the Northern Hemisphere gave rise to several specialised creatures like mammoths and woolly rhinos, and from Heidelbergensis, a specialised species of human, Homo neanderthalensis, the Neanderthal. Part 3 of this story will cover the Neanderthals, and more importantly, the species of you and I. Make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss that.